you have always been there for Haiti. Where, what is your assessment of Haiti today? Uh, we just went down after the earthquake and then after six months to look at any progress of which there had been almost none. At this point, it's uh, President Clinton, former President Clinton, um, who's in charge of the recovery uh, with the Prime Minister of Haiti, Belle Reve, but all say it's really the foreign interests that are in charge. What is your assessment of what's happening there? My assessment of what's happening in Haiti is really very much attuned to what I call business as usual. It's not the first time Haiti has been in trouble, in severe trouble. And America has a pattern in looking at the devastation that takes place in regions where they have great interests. And they move in first and foremost to look how to use the moment of distress to further those interests. And after those interests have been put in place, they look at all else. And how do you protect American foreign policy? Who will you support that will emerge from the ranks of these people to be the leading voices? And who do we determine will become the leaders of these people in this moment of desperate need? That's not true just, that's not just true about Haiti. It's true about any place that has a, a moment of upheaval to step in and to try to change the course of history of their experience. And in this context, uh, Haiti uh, is once again at the doorstep of need and I think it's what America is not doing that is making all the difference in what's happening to this beleaguered nation. And I think the, the, the presence of Clinton, as welcomed as that might be for using his power to focus light on the tragedy, his presence really blurs the deeper truth of what's going on because his presence suggests that power is being used properly. In fact, power is being severely abused in trying to reach out for the needs of the peoples of Haiti. The politics, the political process, choosing the, 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 the voting process, who will be funded by the great resources that pour out of America that will be the next leader. The next leader will be the guy who has the most money. And the people who usually get the most money are the people who are not at the best interests of the indigenous, are not anywhere near the best interests of the people. They are at the best interests of American capital, the best interests of American policy, and at, the, and, 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 at, and at our behest. And this is not a new theory. If you want to look at the Monroe Doctrine and what happened when we wrote that, we stated what the business would be for America's power, especially in this hemisphere. We have always been the colonizer of uh, this hemisphere, wherever we've been. And our policy will prevail everywhere or no policy will prevail. And I think that America must be awakened to that and let me hasten to do something that I hope you will keep in when this broadcast is edited. And that I cannot tell you the untold good that you do for the constituencies that you reach, primarily among young people. I've sat with them in places across the length and breadth of this country when you were on the air. And I listen to their response when you reveal the deeper truth of what's going on in so many places. And the realization that in many instances you're the only voice is not only a testimony to your own courage and your own dignity and your own sense of moral destiny, but it's also a, revel a, re a reflection of how vast we've abused our power at getting information to people so they can make healthy decisions on how to use their space and their power.